cumulative frequency graphs. Now, this should be the second video you're watching on cumulative frequency graph. The first one was about how to draw it, like from data. Now, we're going to talk about how to read it from a graph. Right? Can we see frequency graphs? I'll have to do it's all about how to easily find percentiles, the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, any percentile you want. That's what that's what makes it that's what's really good at about doing. So let's look at this example here. Just looking at this example here, we're talking about the, the height of seedlings. So they, they range, it looks like they range anywhere from 2 to 14. I know how many total seedlings I have, seedlings I have, which is 60, right? Because that's where my max. Now I'm not looking at really at that, I'm looking more at this. The maximum is 6, the right here, the, where, I, where I finish off my frequency, it's at 60. So I have 60 total seedlings. Now if I want to find stuff like the median, well if there's 60 total, 30 would be the median. Now the trick about cumulative frequency graphs is that you always use the graph. So if I'm starting here at 30, we'll go across, I'm going to go down, 7 is my median, right? So you always use the graph. You don't go 30, done. No, it's up and across. Now if I want to find Q1, Q1 would be the cor the lower quartile, right? The median of the bottom half, which would be, since that's 30, would be 15. Q1 or lower quartile. Go across terrible line go down so it should be around six because I don't know my graphs are my drawing is terrible the upper quartile or the median of the top half would be between 60 and 30 so 45 that'd be Q3 you're gonna go across go down and then you just kind of estimate it looks like 8.4 or something it's supposed to be a four um, if you want to find the IQR Right, it's Q3 minus Q1, so it would be in this case it would be 8.4. That's what that is, four out of nine minus six or 2.4. So that's one thing you could do with this graph. Now let's erase all this and let's talk about how to use percentiles with this. Okay, let's go over some percentile questions. One of them might be just simply, how tall does the ceiling have to be to be in the 20th percentile? So what we do there is you go, okay, 20 percentile, I go 0.2, times by the total number of seedlings we have, which is 60. So 0.2 times 60, which would be about 12. So about 12. So what we do there, it's not, your answer is not 12, because again, you got to use the graph. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go here to 12, right, under frequency, so it's about, about the 12th value, so around there, estimate. Then you go across. Again, remember the question was how tall, not how many ceilings. So you either go across and go down. Hopefully your lines are straighter than mine. And I don't know, let's just say it's about 5.4. Again with the 5.4. So about 5.4 centimeters. So that's how we do a problem if they ask you for percentile. Similarly, but slightly different, they could they could switch it up a bit. They could say, um, how tall to be, maybe it's how long, to be in the the top 10 percentile. Now, very similar problem, but that, that word top changes it considerably. It's a little twister. So if they say that, then the idea is you don't just go, oh, 10% times 60, which would be, by the way, and let's do 10% times 60, which would be six. You don't go from the bottom six. It says top. So if they say that, you have to go from the top. So you gotta get our top amount, our total amount, 60, and it's subtract off that 6, right? Because it says from the top. So you got to go 54. And again, 54 is not your answer. You go to 54, you got to use the graph. You never do this without using the graph. Estimate 54, go across, go down. It looks like about 10. So top 10 percentile would be about the height of 10 centimeters. So those are two types of problems like that. So this is the general things I want you, I want you to keep in mind, right? If they give you a percentile, you just, multiply, you just multiply that percentile by the total. In this case, 60, and then you go across and you go down. Now, if they say, if they if they ever say the top percentile or top whatever, then you go from the top. Keep that in mind. Same idea, but you go from the top. So it goes from, you have to go from 60. Basic percentile, you go from zero. That's a slight difference. Now let's go the other way. Let's go from, if it, what if it gave me the height and I got to figure out the percentile? That's what's next. Let me clear the board again. Okay, here we go. Look at I just learned how to insert text into my file, so brand new world. 
But anyway, let's, let's do this example here. If a seedling is less than 7 centimeters, what percentile is it? So here's the key thing about this. It says less than, right? So the little type right there, less than. It's me underlining it and not crossing it out. So that's important, less than 7 centimeters. So what we're going to do is, okay, now they give us centimeters, so we're going to start down here. So 7. Now remember the rule, you always use the graph. So you have to go up. That's a little far, but whatever. And across. Hopefully your lines are better than mine. And let's say I'm going to estimate that to be 29. Now again, now, since it said less than, that's it. You go less than always go from the bottom, just like just like before. So less than percentile, this always goes from the bottom. So actually, I'm almost done. Not totally done. There's 29 seedlings that are less than seven centimeters, but that wasn't the question. It said what percentile? So since I wanted the percentile, I get my value 29. And I got to divide it by the whole thing, so 60. Whatever 29 over 60 is, I'm gonna use my calculator off on the side over here. 29 divided by 60 is 48 percentile, so 0.483, or 48 percentile. So that's what you do when you set the percentile. If it just said like how many seedlings, you just leave it at 29. But percentile, you can find a, a ratio. Likewise, on number two, if a seedling is greater than 10, right? So very important, greater than, you're gonna go, you can go from the top. Right, and anytime it says more than a grade, then you have to go from the top. But the same idea. So here's 10. Right, they gave me centimeters. So again, you're looking at this part. So there's 10. As always, the rule, the main rule here is use the graph. You never, you always have to use the graph. It was pretty straight for a while. Probably the best one I've done yet, until the end. And then from here, go across. Let's say 54. Now here's the thing. Again, my answer is not 54. It says greater than. So how many people are greater than that 54? Well, it goes from 60. So 60 minus 54 is 6. So there's six seedlings greater, six seedlings greater than 54. But again, I want percentile. So I actually got divided by 60. That would be 1 in 10 or 10 percent. 10 percentile. So that's the way that works. The key thing with this stuff is keep in mind, less than goes to the bottom, from the bottom, I should say. All right, so if it says less than, you want to go from the bottom. If it says greater than, you want to go from the top. It's a general rule for community frequency. Always true. Less than from the bottom, greater than from the top. Now let's do some examples. I mean, let's do some real examples. So this is an example right here. The following, the following community frequency graph displays the performance of 80 competitors in a cross-country race. So let's look at this, right? So notice 80 is my max. Right there. There's 80 people that, that went on the race. Now these are different times. So you could go as fast as 21 minutes it looks like and as slow as 35 36 minutes so let's look at the questions first one find the lower quartile now again 80s the max zero is the min so my half my median will be halfway be 40 so this is my median right here have 40 which means my lower quartile will just be halfway between the max and the min which would be 20. so this is my lower quartile or q1 and as always you don't just stop there at 20 you have to go use the graph number one rule here is use the graph so go across go down it looks like it's 27 so 27 is the lower quartile and then we're gonna do the next one find the median well i already got 40 marked off so let's go across go down hope it lies better than mine 29 Upper quartile, right? So half between 80 and 40, so 60. So that's my upper quartile, or Q3. 75% of my data falls right there, so I'll go across in 60. I gotta estimate this one. Not nice. This is not cool. Go down again. It's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> Alright, I guess I'll make it look hard, but whatever. 31.2. Again, that point two is just a, it's a estimation. That's all it is. Find the interquartile range. Okay, well, that's IQR which is Q3 minus Q1, right? My Q3 is right here, 31.2. My Q1's up there, 27. So if I subtract that, I get, let's say, 3.2. 4.2, 4.2. Ha 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 
4.2. Now, the last part of this, well, actually, not the last part, but last part of this little mini part right here is find, estimate the 40th percentile. So, again, now they didn't say top, they didn't, so it's just we go from the bottom. So, it's just 40 percentile, just get 40, multiply that by 80, and you get about 32. So again, not the answer, you got to use the graph. Now, the percentile, so that's on this side. They didn't say minutes or anything, so you're using this side. Estimate about 32. We're going to use the graph. It's the normal rule with this thing. Go across on way too high. <laughs> Go down. I'm going to guess around 28.4 or something like that. Some that effect. Again, it's just an estimate. So that's the way that works. All right, percentile, just multiply. Go across, go down. If they would have said top, I would have done it a little differently. I would have gone from the 80. So if they would have been top, I would have gone, I would have gone 32 down and gone across. But they just said percentile. Now the last part of this people have a hard time with for some reason is this right here. They want you to fill out the following table. So the way this works is actually it's not that bad. It's you just go 21. So 21 right here. If you look at 21, you're at zero. So this is zero. Then we go to 24, which is right here. And that's at 5. Sorry for the bad line again. So the number of people that went between 0 and 24 is just 5. Now notice how this one right here starts at 24. So we know that's 5 already. So we just got to go to 27. And based on what I did earlier, 27 is at 20. There's 20 people at 27. So the number of people that fit, that fit in between 24 and 27 is just 15. Then we have 27, which we already know it's 20. So now we got to go with 30. 30, follow this graph up and across. Looks like 50 for 30. At 50 minutes, 30 people fought. So then you subtract those and you get 30. So now we start at 30, which we again we know is 50 from the previous one we just did. We got to go 33. So go to 33, 31, 32, 33. Go up and across. About 70. So 70, 50, it's going to be 20. The last one's the easiest one. I'm going to do the work. 36, I know it has to end at 80. That's where we topped off at. So 10. So that's how you fill out, that's how you go backwards for a community frequency graph. Right, you always just look at these, what does 21 get you? What does 24 get you? Subtract. Oh, you already had 24? So now just figure out what 27 is, subtract. And yada, yada, yada. That's it for that example. Let's go to our final example for this lesson. Right here. Examination examination works under marks was given to 800 biology students. The cumulative frequency graph of the students' results is shown below. Find the number of students who scored 45 marks or less for the test. So again, key thing right there, or less. That means once I find it, I'm going to go up and across, and I go from the bottom, right? Or less is from the bottom. Greater than is from the top. So 45 marks or less. So let's get this thing right here. So here's 40. Here's marks, first of all. Here's 40. Here's 50. So 45 is around there. Go up. Oh, slides are the worst thing in the world. And across. Oh. <laughs> and across. I, I can't have a rule here. It's, so it looks like I'm going to say about one, about 110. Let's go 110. I'm sorry for the bad lines. <laughs> so let's just say 110. Right? So that's how many people scored less than 45 marks. Find the median score. That's a lot, right? So remember, median just go 800 students. The median will be about 400. So for the median score, I'm going to go right here to 400. This is my median. So my max is 800. My lowest is 0. So then I'm going to go across and down. You don't know this, but I tried to change the color. It did not happen. I'm a little annoyed right now. I'm going to go down. Now you get 65. So 65 marks is the median score. Now the middle 50, between the values of the middle 50, now that's just like vocab. You remember what middle 50 means? IQR. So this is Q3 minus Q1. So I gotta find those, I haven't found those yet. Actually between what values? So I'm not gonna subtract, I'm just gonna state those values. They, they, they didn't say, like, find the IQR. It says between what two values. So, it's got to find Q3 and Q1. 
So Q3, let's do that first. So here's 800, here's 400. Q3 would be halfway, which would be right there. Upper quartile. Go across. That's yeah, not bad. And let's go down. I'm going to jinx myself now. So about 75. That's actually a good line for me. So we have 75 for our Q3. Q1, right? Halfway between 400 and 0. So about 200. So our Q1. Go across. And go down. Uh, another one I got to estimate. Looks like, I'm, let's say 54. So, but, so right here it says between what two values? About 75 and 54. Now, now they want that inner quarter, find the inner quarter range. So now you just subtract those two. 75 minus 54, also known as 21, is our, our IQR. Next one, what percentage of students obtain a marker more than, hey, more than 55? Again, a couple things you want to note. They give you the marks. We're looking at marks first. We're going to go mark up and across. They want more than 55. And again, also notice it says percentage. So once I get my number, it's not the answer. I get to divide by the whole thing. So more than, again, from the top, more than. So I go down here. Look at my marks. So here is 55. Right, so again, here's my marks. I go up and across. You always use the graph on this problem. And then go across. And it's, an, it's another, you have to do an estimate. So about, let's say, 220. Now, again, it said more than. So we got to go from the top. It said more than. So let's go from the top. So 800 minus 220. So about 580. Again, that's actually not my answer. That's how many students scored more than 55. But the question is said what percent what percentage. So it's like saying what percentile. So you go 5, what was that, 520? 580. So you go 580 divided by 800. And whatever that turned out to be would be my percentile. And the last question on this problem. If a distinction is worth for the top 10% of students, again, notice from the top 10%, what score is required to receive this honor? So what score do you need to get? What mark do you need to get if you want to be top 10? So again, remember, top 10 means from the top. So first, let's figure out what 10% is. 10% times that by 800. And I get 80. So the top 80 students. But again, that's from the top. So 800, right, go from top, minus 80 is 720. So now... I got to go 720 across and go down because you always use the graph, right? So again, top 10%, so multiply 10% times 800. Now I want it from the top, so I, once I did that, I got to subtract it. So I know, okay, around 720 students below them. So you go to my graph. Again, you got to estimate 720. I don't know, somewhere around here-ish. Go across. Go down. I know. So based on mine, you need to score like around an 82 or 83. All right. So you need you get to score 82 if you want to be about if you want to be in the top 10 percent of the class. And that's how you do commuter frequency graphs. They're very important in IB. They ask this about once every year or two. It's it's a there's a big chance this will be an IB test.